Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at routing in Nilo. Uh, I'm going to kind of take you guys through um, how you can actually add routes, um, add transitions. We're also going to be looking at some of the different navigation types and how to pass data from one page to another. Um, just an introduction uh, to routes. In general, they kind of allow us to navigate our users throughout the app. Uh, you could have, for instance, a, a forgot password page and a site like a login page. And if you wanted to link the two, you can use routes to do that. So we'll take a quick like look into it and um, yeah, help you guys get started. Uh, just kind of understanding the fundamentals really. So, so as you can see here, what we need to do to add routes is go to our lib routes and router dot dot file. Head over to the project. You can see we've got this set up here. Uh, so at the moment we just have one route which is our index page which just goes to our home page which is this so this is kind of what you're seeing here uh, to add new pages there's two methods really you can either go to resources and inside pages and create your pages manually or you can use the command line tool to actually build or create our pages for us so in Nilo there's a way to do that we can kind of copy this command and paste it in the terminal and right at the very end instead of uh, the default my page we're just going to name the page something different we'll call it a login login page and what this will do in the background is going to create a, a new page for us and you'll see it just being created there as you can see it's just a, a default page uh, in Flutter at the moment but we're going to add to it so to add that route I'm just going to copy this and we'll name this login just like that and here we're just going to replace this with our login page just like that too and yeah we don't have this bit so that's all we need so now this route will be registered and we'll be able to navigate to that page from our home page so we'll just add in a quick button right at the very end just to allow that Let's and yeah we'll just end add the route that we've added which is the login so yeah if we rerun the app what we should see now is our login page and that will navigate us to the new page that we've just created just wait for that to build So yeah, now we can test that login button. You can see it's added it right at the very bottom. If we click that, you can see it navigates to the login page. I think what I'm gonna do is just add a title just so it's a bit easier to work out which page we're on. So put login and for the child here we'll just put login page. Just like that. Perfect. So the next thing we'll cover in routes is actually the uh, as you can see here this was the navigation of how you can navigate the route suite is another method called route 2 you can do that using the my state widget but we're just going to cover just the basic way of doing it at the moment so uh, in the next bit now what we're going to cover is transitions so we also have the ability to add transitions to our route so if we wanted a, a transition from uh, the landing page to this maybe from like top to bottom or for it to fade in uh, what we can do is head over to the routes and if we put a transition here and we just need a page transition what we're going to add is a transition so add left to right with fade and see what that looks like So you can see there it's added a, a little bit of effect. Let me just make it a bit more obvious. Let's do like a top to bottom. And you can see like how that works. So there's many different transitions you can add. Um, if you just click on the natural class itself, on the page transition type, you'll see all the different types of effects uh, you can kind of add. Uh, so that's like the overview of transitions too. 
So in this part, we're going to look at how to actually pass data from one page to another. And what, how we can do this is um, on our navigator, we also have a, an argument parameter that we can actually pass uh, some data. So for in instance, we're just going to pass a string, hello world, to the next page for our login page. So for now, we're going to just like print it in the console. And how we can do that is go to our login page, which is linked here. So go to our router you can see our login page and if we head over to here this is where we're going to retrieve that data from the previous page so how to do that is um, if you firstly change this to a nice stateful widget and second then just add a controller just like that then once you've got your controller, uh, you can then just start accessing the data that, would be, that has been passed through the request. So well, we can access that as a through widget controller, which is referencing this controller. And then we can just call data, just like that. So if we rerun the app, I'll just show you how that works. So click login. You can see hello world is now printed. And if we wanted to, we could access it uh, in a, a variable. So we can call this uh, data and just make it a string. Then instead of printing it, we'll just do this. Now we can access that in the widget itself. So rather than the login page, uh, what we'll do is just change the title to that data which is down here obviously we need to make sure it's not null so yeah if we rerun the app again last time you can now see yeah, it transforms to hello world which is passed through our previous page and the great thing about this is it doesn't have to just be a string it can be any type of object so it could be a model it could be um, like some JSON, um, it literally could be anything, an array. Uh, you can kind of pass anything through these arguments and uh, kind of pass it in the next one. And this can be one, two, three. And yeah, in our login page, rather than printing this out because we know this won't work anymore, we're just going to uh, come that out. So just do. Yeah, we run this again and you'll just see that the data now is a an array which you can see at the bottom there so that's an introduction to passing data from one view to the other just to ensure that your kind of stateful widget is a nice stateful widget and second also that you have a controller and this will all work just as intended so in this next part we're going to look into navigating back from one view to the other you might be familiar with Navigator Pop, and if you're not, it's okay. Uh, all this does is uh, pops the, the current widget really to the previous one. So, for instance, if we were on the log, well, the login page here, and we wanted to go back, uh, we could pop and head back to the the landing page. So, but what we're going to look into is actually how you can pass data back to that original view. Uh, so it's quite a cool feature in Nilo. Uh, you can do it obviously in standard Flutter, but in Nilo it does make it, there is like a really easy way to do it. So we'll just take a look at how you can do that. So um, first thing we're going to add is a button that will pop the view. What we're going to do is call pop and we have this like, result. So as you can see from the documentation as well, you, uh, if I just go up a little bit. There we go. So you can see that we can pass a kind of like a dynamic data set, uh, well, dynamic data object to the previous view. It can be a string, it could be an object, it could be a, a model. Again, so here we're just going to put hello, maybe I'm back. Just say that. And for this to work, uh, what we'll need to do in our other page so this is our login page so this is where we're coming back from but in the home page which we're coming well we're transitioning from uh, to actually get that data all we need to do is 
do this. So uh, on pop. So just gonna copy this, and we're gonna be using the route two instead of the navigator now, just because it's got the uh, the argument to pack. We'll get that value a bit easier. So if we use route two and on pop argument. See, we get the value, and we'll just run the app. Show you how that works. Cool. So yeah, if we now navigate to login, and then if we click login page, we navigate back, and you can see we get that data back from the previous view. And uh, what's really useful with this, it could be like a value such as if something's been created, updated, and you want to show something on the previous page, you can do that. So um, again, like this could be an object or anything you want to pass back from the previous view. So uh, we could pass, for instance, again, like an array, one, two, three. And in our previous view, let's just print that out. So we build the app. If we click our login page, you can see uh, it navigates back, but we get the array passed from the previous view. So that's a really powerful way really just to pop and return a result to the previous widget. So the last thing we're going to cover is actually grouping routes. So if, for instance, if you have like a huge project and you don't want all your routes to be in one file, which for instance is just this router file, you can actually separate them into different ones. So uh, first thing we're going to have to do is just create a, a new file for the router. So we can call this, for instance, maybe if we have like account routes or our account router. And so for this year, we can just copy this and put it over here. And if we had some pages, for instance, for um, our user account, we could have like a profile. We could also have maybe profile slash edit if someone's editing their profile. Uh, for now, we're just going to keep these widgets the same so they will navigate to the same ones, but just show you that it is working. So the next thing we also need to do is just change the the name uh, here, so we'll just call this account router, and that's all we need to do uh, in this file. The last bit we need to do is now head over to providers, which you can find in lib app providers and route provider. And here we just need to add a new route for the account, so add that there and just import the class. That's all we need. So. Uh, to navigate to these new routes, this profile and edit profile, we can just do the same really. So it's going to be a bit confusing because we I know we have two of the same widgets at the moment. But um, yeah, uh, we'll just navigate to profile. Uh, if we click this now, you can see it navigates to the same page because it's linked to the same page. So you can see that's all working. Uh, so yeah, that's how you can kind of group your routes and obviously change your widgets to something else But kind of separate your routes if you want to or you could just have uh, One big file, but um, yeah, if you want to be a bit organized you can there is an option to do that as well So I hope you've enjoyed this video you can learn more about the router class in the docs if you just head over to Nilo and just go to the basics and router you'll kind of just see everything that we've covered. So hope you've enjoyed this first video to the router in Nilo and I'll see you in the next one.